let us move ahead and try to understand these conditions. So, the first thing that you need to understand is does the hybrid contract contain a host that is an asset within the scope of India S 109. That means the first fundamental question that you should ask is once you identify a hybrid contract which contains a host contract and an embedded derivative you ask yourself a question about the nature of the host contract is it a financial asset in other words is it an asset within the scope of India S 109 when you ask this question there can be two possible answers either yes or no if the answer is yes on the right hand side we would write do not separate the embedded derivative from the host contract and if you do not separate the embedded derivative from the host contract obviously what you are going to do you need to put the entire hybrid instrument as measured at FVTPL means the entire hybrid instrument will be measured at fair value through profit or loss. This is to be done when the host contract is a financial asset in other words when the host contract is an asset within the scope of India S 109. But what if the host contract is not a financial asset that means the answer to this question comes as no then the standard requires separate the embedded derivative depending upon the conditions as mentioned below. Now these are the conditions that we have yet to discuss if you can see in your notes you just ended up writing those three conditions but let us now understand the implication of those three conditions one by one. The first condition is the economic characteristics and risks of the embedded derivatives are closely related to those of the host. So, you are asking a question whether the economic characteristics and risks of embedded derivatives are they closely related to those of the host. So, the answer of this question could be either a yes or a no. The logic behind this is if the answer is yes that means the nature of embedded derivative and host contract is so similar that their risks are exactly matching their economic characteristics are closely related to each other. In that case there is no need to account for the embedded derivative and host contract separately it will be better to put the entire hybrid instrument as measured at FVTPL. That means if the answer to this condition is yes then simply the entire hybrid instrument is measured at FVTPL without any doubts. However, if the answer to this question comes as no then and then only you step into the next situation that is the next condition. So, if you can recall the three conditions that you have written A, B and C between B and C it was the word and given correct that means all those three conditions need to be fulfilled. So, if the answer to this is no then only you step into the second condition. The second condition is a separate instrument with the same term as embedded derivative would meet the definition of a derivative. That means whatever you are trying to separate is an embedded derivative from the host contract. So, its accounting can be done only when that embedded derivative individually qualifies the definition of derivative. So, if the answer to this question is a no then you cannot account for the derivative separately then you will have to do the same thing that is entire hybrid instrument is measured at FVTPL. However, if the answer to this question is yes that means then and then only you can account for that embedded derivative separately. So, if the answer is yes you do not separate it directly because there is yet another condition and that one another condition is is the hybrid contract measured at FVTPL. See the whole idea is if you want to put the entire hybrid contract at FVTPL then there is no sense of separating the embedded derivative from the host contract because either way both will be measured at FVTPL. So, if the answer to this question is a yes 
then simply do not try to separate the embedded derivative then entire hybrid instrument is measured at FVTPL. However, if the answer to this is no then and then only you will be putting the separation of embedded derivative from its host contract. So, embedded derivative is separated and accounted for separately. I am sure you would have understood all these uh, three conditions and how to apply these conditions one by one to test whether the embedded derivative should be accounted for separately or not. So, this chart is important. So, as per this chart if at all you are landing up at a situation where you are willing to account for the entire hybrid instrument under FVTPL category then separation anyway not needed. If you want to separate it then obviously the separate measurements would come into picture. So, first fundamental question are you able to determine the fair value of the embedded derivative because if you want to separate you will have to measure the embedded derivative as a derivative that will be recognized in the category of derivative which is mainly under FVTPL category and therefore, you must know the fair value of the embedded derivative that is the first possibility that do you know the fair value of embedded derivative or in other words can you determine the fair value of the embedded derivative if the answer is yes determine the fair value of embedded derivative and from the fair value of the entire hybrid contract subtract the fair value of embedded derivative the residual value will be the value of the host contract. Another thing if the embedded derivative value cannot be determined then the next question comes up is can you determine the fair value of the host contract separately if you can determine the fair value of the host contract separately then from the fair value of the entire hybrid contract minus the fair value of the host contract that balancing figure would give you the fair value of the embedded derivative. If answer to that question also is no that means independently you are not able to find out the fair value of either of them then how will you separately account for these then separation cannot be done and then finally, what you have to again do is put the whole hybrid contract in FVTPL category without any separation. So, the point is here even after fulfillment of these all conditions if you come to a conclusion that yes the embedded derivative should be separately accounted for then whether that is doable or not is also a question. So, let me do one thing let me give you an additional chart to clarify this particular matter. So, one more chart you please write up where the first question arises is is the hybrid contract designated at fair value through profit or loss in its entirety. If the answer to this is a yes then do not separate embedded derivative and entire hybrid instrument is measured at fair value through profit or loss. If the answer to this is no then you ask a question can fair value of embedded derivative be measured reliably if the answer is yes then measure embedded derivative and allocate residual to the host. If the answer to this question is no that means you cannot measure the fair value of the embedded derivative if the answer to this question is no then the standard requires you to analyze this question is the entity able to measure the fair value of the host contract if the answer to this question also is a no then entire hybrid instrument is measured at fair value through profit or loss however if the answer to this is a yes then you better measure the fair value of the host and from the fair value of the hybrid contract you subtract the fair value of the host and the balancing figure what you get will be the fair value of the embedded derivative. So, the conclusion is fair value of embedded derivative equals to fair value of hybrid contract minus fair value of host contract.